Hello friends, welcome to this ECA Reset Live Lecture. Dear friends, in this session today we are going to talk on managing human resources and labor relations. Today's lecture is a part two of our series on human resource management and for this very lecture we have once again with us in our studios Dr. Namita Rajput. Dr. Namita Rajput is Associate Professor in Department of Commerce, Sri Aurobindo College, University of Delhi. So we would like to welcome our guest Dr. Namita Rajput. Hello ma'am, welcome to the Reset Lecture. So very good morning to all the viewers. So today's uh, lecture would be on managing human resources and the labor relations. As you all know, to control the labor, to have a directions for the labor relations is the most difficult task these days. Because we are living in a knowledge era in which the internet and communication technologies make them aware about their rights and how they have to perform, what is their competitive uh, firm is doing and what is uh, going around the globe. So under this backdrop, we are going to start with this uh, uh, lecture. Now, as a matter of fact, all the labor, they should have this kind of an attitude, like when they are interviewed. So, you know, they should come out with one quote, that is, whenever you are asked if you can do a job, then you have to tell them that, yes, we can do it. It is on the later part of your own uh, personality that you have to find out the ways how you can do it. So with this kind of an attitude, if the individuals have in mind, so the road success would be uh, definite. Now let us uh, discuss certain key topics. So let us have a look on this slide. The human resource management, the staffing, developing and evaluating the human resources, compensation packages, the legal issues in the human resources, the changes in the contemporary world, the unionization and the collective bargaining. Now besides this, we have another uh, part in which we will take upon certain strategic questions. So as a matter of fact, the human resource management is all about attracting the good human resources in the organization and having an effective uh, way to retain them also. So uh, under this, we have to do certain kind of planning. So let us have a look on this kind of uh, what kind of planning we do when you ask for a human resource management. Uh, the first is you have to do a conduct analysis. In this we do certain forecasting about how much labor do you need. And then of course there are two types of forecasting which you do that is what are your internal supply of the labor and what is the external supply of the labor. Then of course you have to develop a plan in which the matching is done in terms of uh, what is the demand and what is the supply so that the organizational needs can be matched. So this is the human resource planning process. So all these things have to be clubbed together in order to find out that this is the right number of the people which we need in an organization. Now there is a systematic uh, review of the job after that, after the planning. That is you need to have a job description and then you have to have a job dis specifications. The job description is all about the responsibilities and the working conditions plus the tools, material, equipments which are required to perform a job followed by the job specifications that is what is the requisite amount of skills, abilities, qualifications which you need to fulfill that job conditions. So this is all these things are in series and they have to be fulfilled one after the other and no point and no step can be bypassed. So the first thing what which we discussed was the planning in which the requisite amount of the workforce which you need for an organization is planned then followed by a conduct analysis in which you uh, will actually have a deep analysis of what you have and what you have to acquire from outside. So this is the final plan which you have in mind that this is the number right number of the people which we need for the organization. Now after you have the right number of the people which you have to recruit for the organization, the next aspect is the job description and the job analysis. Description is all about fixing the responsibilities and the working conditions, tool equipments which is needed for a job and specification centers around the, the skills, the mindsets, the qualifications which you need to fulfill that particular job. Now after that you have to have a labor forecasting supply. 
that is the internal forecasting is done and the external forecasting is done. Now when you are forecasting the labor supply in an organization, the internal forecasting is all about the replacement charts and the skill inventories. Now the replacement charts is very important because there are certain workforce which are not uh, proving to be a uh, asset for the organization. So you need those people to be replaced. For this you, you need to have a replacement chart and in this you will do a conduct analysis and a deep analysis of how they are performing in the organization. And of course, then you have a skill inventories in front of you. The skill inventories is all about that is what is the amount of uh, qualifications which we have, how many people with they have, what is the qualifications do they have so that we can do a proper matching for what we have and what we need to acquire from outside. Because sometimes you have a good labor force with you which is having a requisite amount of qualifications with them. So if we upgrade them or if we, if we give them some kind of a training and development, your needs can be satisfied. Whereas the lower people can be recruited from the outside world. So this is what a very strategic and important decisions which the uh, human resource department has to take. Now we have the external forecasting which is very very important uh, for a right amount of people which we need for the organization. In this we have to see the government reports, the information, uh, the, the employment commission data with you so that you have a right amount of uh, projections in front of you. Now after that, if you are having some kind of a projected shortfall in terms of the number of people, then of course you will have to recruit them. Then uh, maybe you hire certain new employees, you have to hire certain temporary workers, you, ha you can hire certain casual workers or maybe some uh, older people are retiring so you need to replace them with the good amount of uh, people who are having that amount of skills with them. But not the experience because experience is something which is uh, very enduring in nature and unless and until a human or a human resource person is there in the organization for a longer time, the experience has to be gathered and collected. So you have to take a very important and a strategic decisions which is definitely a projection of your previous work and if the previous work or the previous steps are not in a right direction then of course uh, it will be very difficult for you to find out what is the right number in front of you. So this has to be a very uh, creative solution, a very innovative solution and the projected shortfalls have to be rightly projected. Now when you are having a shortfall, so let us have a look on this, we have to recruit the people. So recruitment is basically about attracting the qualified candidates to apply for a job. That is you are uh, asking for a good and the prospective employees to come and join in the organization. So uh, sometimes we are having an internal recruitment and sometimes we have the external recruitment. Internal recruitment is all about uh, considering the current employees for the new positions whereas the external recruitment is about attracting from the outside sources that this is the uh, number of people which we need from the outside world. So when you are doing this kind of analysis, you have to uh, find out that this is our internal strength if you have the good number of people with you and this is our external weakness. Now how you have to select the human resources is all about validity. Now the predictive value of a selection technique is very very important. So when you uh, do a selection of, of an employee, you need to have the application blanks in which all the information will be filled by the candidate followed by certain number of tests which have to be conducted by the employer so that you understand that what is the position of the employees in terms of their intellectual capabilities, in terms of their aptitude skills, in terms of their situational aspects, etc. So then after clearing of the written test, then there is a one-to-one -one interaction which is called as an interview because in interview you uh, have uh, these days the Skype interviews, the online interviews, the internet interviews, the YouTube interviews so that you uh, get to know how your employee is conversing, how your communication, uh, communication skills are there for the employees and so on and so forth. So there will be so many questions which will be asked straight from the employees by the employers in one-to-one one interaction which is called as an interview. This will also give the insights about what is the uh, right uh, people, wh whether the people are right for your organization or not. Now uh, definitely after this uh, sometimes uh, there is a need for the training and development so you uh, 
develop a basically a workforce. Now to develop a workforce you need a certain uh, specific type of training and development programs which can enhance their particular skills and which could be on the job, off the job and it could be a vestibule training in which a particular school is uh, uh, specifically de dedicated for the training programs in which certain simulations, seminar, conference, lectures and uh, sometimes uh, an artificial conditions are created as the uh, employer has to face employee has to face in the future and uh, on the job training is a perfect combination and off the job both these things have to be in combination to give the employee the best kind of a training program so this is what is uh, basically called as developing of the workforce now after this uh, uh, once you are through with the uh, selection recruitment planning process now is the time to give them the good compensation benefits and the plans because this is one thing which can always uh, uh, you know help the employees to retain in the organization and this would obviously reduce the labor turnover so this would be either uh, in cash or in kind so there is one aspect of the salary one component of the salary which is always in cash whereas other things uh, could be in uh, kind some kind of packages some kind of benefits uh, maybe a city compensatory allowance or uh, money paid for accomplishing certain things or it could be a commission base so it has to be in combination with the uh, so many factors together and together we have to conglomerate and collect all the factors together to make the employees more happy. So the compensation has to be very uh, diligently planned, very intelligently planned because if there is any fallout in this case, this could lead to uh, a more cost for the organization in terms of uh, the labor would leave the organization and uh, unnecessarily there would be a cost for hiring of the new people. Then again spending of more time and efforts to make them aware about the, uh, about the organization and of so on and so forth. Then you have to be very specific about that you cannot be very undescriptive uh, about any kind of uh, um, people in the organization like you cannot be uh, unfair with the female employees and unfair with the male employees, um, male counterparts uh, because uh, the salary aspects, uh, the working conditions aspect. Uh, the protected class, the affirmative actions has to be equally done for all the employees. So any kind of uh, discriminatory decisions can be suicidal for the organization. So this is again a, a human resource management uh, function to see that whether any kind of unfair treatment is given to anyone, to a minority class and uh, the gender specific decisions. So all these, these decisions have to be a part uh, of the human resource management to have a good uh, uh, human human resources retained in that organization. Now there are certain uh, contemporary aspects uh, which are legal in nature about the human resource management like about their safety and health. Now in the yester years uh, both these aspects whether it is a legal or a health issues they were at the back end and uh, uh, more or less more not uh, very laws and uh, uh, certain uh, regulatory aspects were really absent in the yester years. So now is the time for uh, you know embedding the legal aspects the judiciary aspects the uh, the rules and the regulations which have been framed by the government now and again to be a part of the culture and uh, definitely the employees healthy and the uh, health and the safety issues must be taken on priority because it is no more an, uh, no more an option it is perhaps a mandatory aspect uh, which every organization has to take care of that then of course uh, uh, if you happen to see that there are certain people who are suffering from AIDS you cannot chuck them out because again it is a legal aspect that you have to be very considerate with these kind of people because the disease uh, which they are suffering from is fatal in nature. So un unnecessarily the individual is already uh, you know very low in terms of their uh, mental health so we should always support in their physical health and of course uh, giving them all kind of a support system rather than chucking them out of the organization with no fault of theirs. Then of course uh, if there is a kind of a sexual harassment uh, which is uh, catched uh, in the organization that has to be uh, actually taken care of because the sexual harassment at the workplace is also one of the conditions because of which the reputation of the company can be at bay. So uh, the human resource department should have the female representatives to take care of all these aspects because they are very vital in nature and no, in no way it cannot be ignored because the sexual harassment is one thing which can actually make the organization uh, a titanic that is it will drown once again because 
because you have to respect the female employees as well. Then of course, uh, any kind of a hostile working environment has to be nipped in the bud because any hostility can actually again be fatal for the organization. Then the employment at will uh, should be introduced. That is those people who want to work uh, for the organization for an X period of time uh, should work and otherwise they should be allowed to quit because it is a win-win situation for both. Because now the organization uh, does not want that employee. So happily, uh, it can give a farewell to that employee and an employee also must not tag itself with any kind of a bad character certificate from the employer. So employment at will must be introduced. Then of course, uh, managing of diversity is another issue because diversity, when you talk about these days, is uh, at the top because uh, we have diversity at race, color, creed, religion, gender, then generational diversity. So all these diversities, uh, they, you know, put a very kind of a vital challenge for the human resource managers, which are the millennium managers of today. And of course, they, they have to come out with a good consensus and a good decision making so that all these things can be balanced out very easily. Because any diversity at any level, if ignored, can also be uh, proved to be a very bad factor for the organization, not a feel-good factor for the organization. Now, uh, when you're talking about the managing the knowledge workers, the knowledge workers add value because what they know uh, is uh, very, very important. So, my, we must value the knowledge workers and we should always take care about their every aspect, every need uh, for the organization and they should also not be unfair at that point their part. Then we have uh, to plan about the contingent workers. This is also posing a lot of challenge for them. A rapidly growing challenge is a contingent workers. Management challenges are there. So the first is the management challenge. We talk about the careful planning. The careful planning is very, very important these days because any lapse in terms of the planning can also be uh, put a great cost and a big cost for the organization. Then you have to understand the, the understanding of the pros and cons of uh, each and every aspect issue which is connected to that. You have to assess the true cost and finally and eventually you have to develop a very good strategy for the organization uh, which is again uh, proving to be most efficient and the less cost effective, uh, I mean less cost uh, bearing for the organization. Now you have to manage the organized labor. Now, this is one factor which needs uh, a lot of explanation. Now, we have a labor unions who are uh, working for the cause of the labor. So, people working together to achieve the shared jobs uh, related goals. So, they talk about the wages, they talk about the not fair wages, they have to talk about the strikes and the labor relations is about managing the unionized employees. Now, in the yester years, uh, the labor unions were not very strong. But these days, if we see the labor, uh, you know, labor is so strong that any kind of a lapse, any kind of a unfair treatment can also uh, be a very bad factor for the organization because they are unionized. Any kind of uh, unfair treatment can actually uh, be a big cause for the strike. Could, it could be a lockout. It could be, you know, loss of productive time for the organization. So you have to be very diligent and careful when any kind of uh, managing of these uh, organized labor because organized labor these days are very prevalent. Now let us talk about certain recent trends in the organized labor. The first is the union management relationships. Then we have bargaining perspectives. Then we have a future outlook. Now this is the trend in the uh, organized labor that you have to be a very congenial uh, and you have to develop a very good relationship in terms of union management relationship. That is management should also not feel that they are not working for them and the labor should also not feel that they are being uh, you know, any kind, any way ignored. So a labor union management relationship has to be very strong and it is again the aspect of the human resource management and the human resource managers have to actually intervene to uh, make these relationships very, uh, you know, strong. Then we talk about the bargaining perspective. You know, every individual works for their own benefit, be it management, be it labor. 
the labor always wants uh, good wages good working conditions uh, stability in their, in their tenure fair conditions so on and so forth so similarly if you see the perspective of the management the management also wants uh, the money to be spent should be less it should be cost effective and it should want uh, it wants uh, a good uh, productive time which the every labor has to spend so everyone works in their mind for their own benefits and own uh, you know relationships so some kind of a bargaining trade off has to be done like what the labor wants and what the management wants there has to be some midway and a consensus built up so that everyone is reasonably happy then we have a future outlook the future outlook should always be uh, considerate in terms of the the knowledge workers the modern workers because they are so strong that if you kick them out they have immense opportunities and it would be again a cost for the organization so every manager the human resource manager must put in their best efforts that the labor turnover should be less and they should have a futuristic approach and uh, the bargaining uh, aspects must be carefully and diligently done and uh, no party should feel offended and no party should feel ignored and every party should understand be it a management be it a labor that their voice is being heard so this is primarily the main uh, perspective and the job of the human resource managers of today now let us talk about uh, certain collective bargaining negotiating a labor contract now there is a union demand there is a union expectations and there is a union maximum limit if you see the employees point of view they also have a maximum limit they have the expectations and they have the employer desired results so what the labor wants and what the union wants there has to be a merging of the two which is called as a bargaining zone like few aspects will be taken care of of the labor few aspects which are vital for the management must be taken care of by the ma- for the management and somewhere or the other we are having a broad bargaining zone so more the bargaining zone it is the better it is because here and this bargaining zone if you see the slide once again the bargaining zone here must be broadened which signifies the happiness of both the parties be it labor and be it the management now we have certain contract issues like compensation benefits job security union issues and the management rights so all these contract issues again have to be very uh, you know uh, diligently studied and deep insights must be taken care of so that there is no problem from the labor point of view and lo- no problem from the management point of view now when bargaining fails what happens the union tactics is they go on to strikes they go on to picketing they go on to boycotts they go on to work slow down so all these uh, techniques when you talk about the union there is a union meeting you know every uh, fortnightly or monthly as the case may be so these strategic tactics are taught to the workers that if the management is not listening to you simply you have to go and pen down if you uh, pen down in terms of you have to go in on a for a strike you have to stop working and if you continue to work then your work pace should be very very less then you should by court what the management has to ask you so these tactics are very severe in nature and of course it is going to offend the management people now see what uh, the management tactics is all about they will just close the factory that is the lockouts and the strike breakouts they will always try for <clears throat> now when you try, uh, talk about the strike breakers uh, it is all about that is uh, if the union representative is there he is he will be bribed he will be given a fat amount maybe in crores or maybe in lakhs as the size of the organization would be and then automatically the representative of the labor becomes a representative of the management so this is what uh, the regular tactics of the management is all about so this is in case of any kind of a fallout if there is no fallout then of course and uh, there the bargaining zone would move up but but yes if there is a fallout either the union tactics will uh, prevail or the management tactics will prevail now let us talk about uh, certain uh, questions here they are very very important and uh, of course we'll be doing it one by one the first is why do people make a difference because here we are talking about human resources and the people management so the first question which we would be talking about here is why do people make a difference second what is a strategic human resource management 
How do organizations attract the quality workforce? How do organizations develop a quality workforce? And how do organizations maintain a quality workforce? So attracting, developing and maintaining the quality workforce is all about managing the people. Because the first thing is that you have to make them come to the factory and join your organization. The next thing is to give them certain quality aspects that is you give them a lot of training and development sessions so that they become a quality workforce for you and eventually you have to maintain that quality. So the, these are the three pillars of uh, managing the people and the human resource management. So let us talk about these one by one. The first question, why do people make a difference? Everyone knows that the human capital is very essential for the organizational long-term health and development. Then of course, uh, when the people are there, so they would be uh, having certain work ethics with them. They are, have, they are very high profile people. They have the knowledge, creativity, motivation, sincerity, curiosity, judgment and integrity. So this is how uh, the people will make a difference. And if these things are not absent, the people will not make a difference. So first we talk about why do, why do we need good people? So answer is that without people, we cannot do anything. Then why do people make a difference? Because of all these factors and the qualities which we have talked about, let us narrate them once again. The work ethics, ambition, energy, knowledge, creativity, innovations, sincerity, curiosity, judgment and integrity. They are very, very vital aspects because of which the people will make a difference. Now, what is a strategic human resource management? Now, major human resource management responsibility is to attract the quality workforce, then developing a quality workforce and maintaining a quality workforce. So, this is again a very, very strategic and important decision when you talk about the human resource management. And this is what is we call it as a strategic human resource management because there are certain strategies which we will apply to conclude our basic attracting, developing and maintaining of the quality workforce in the organizations of today. Now, the first is what is the strategic management resources? The first is discrimination in employment. It occurs when someone is defined a job and the job assignment for reasons that are not job prevalent. Then we have employment entity and an effort to give a preference in employment to certain people, maybe women, maybe minority uh, or people with uh, different abilities or we call it as a disabled people. Then bona fide occupational requirements are employment criteria justified by capacity to perform a job. So once you are giving them employment, you have to be sir, in some way discriminative in nature in terms of like uh, the female, uh, for the females, the jobs would be little different. For especially abled people, uh, the jobs would be different. For the human resource managers who are, uh, you know, talking about the employment criteria. So these criteria are primarily, we call it as a strategic human resources because you have to be actually strategic when you are employing minority people, majority people, gender specific jobs and of course the specially abled people. Now what is a strategic human resource management? Basically uh, the current legal issues in the human resource management again you have to be strategic otherwise the organizations have to face a music. Like for example, sexual harassment is a behavior of a sexual nature that affects a person's employment situation. If a female does not feel safe in an organization, that female will never want to be a part of that organization anymore. Then of course, the, uh, the different rules, uh, different code of conducts uh, relating to the, uh, the sexual harassment of the people at the workflows have been announced. So those have to be actually fulfilled and completely uh, be a part. Otherwise, the people will always be inhibited and they will be discouraged to join a particular organization. And then of course, certain uh, landmarks, certain part-time workers, independent workers. So different rules are there to attract different kind of people. Now, how do organizations attract a quality workforce? So this is the first aspect of a strategic human resource management. The first thing is that you have to attract them. How do you attract them? That is uh, human resource planning analysis and organization HR needs and how to best fill them. The first thing is that you have to have uh, how many people you need them and of course which people will suit and how will you fill that particular job. So you have to review the organizational mission objectives and strategies. You have to review the HR objectives and strategies. And then of course you have to forecast the HR needs and you have to develop 
the and implementation of the HR needs. Now, what are the steps in the strategic management planning? The first, you have to review the organization mission and objectives. Then, of course, secondly, you have to review the human resource objectives and strategies. In this, we have again two steps. You have to assess the current human resources, that is what quality people we have. Then, of course, you would understand that how many people will be required when and of what types and finally you have to develop a plan in which you would recruit the people, you would select the people, you would train the people, then you would talk about their compensation packages and of course the labor management relationships and you have to do everything in the domain of the legal environment and the government regulations. Now how do organizations attract a quality workforce? The foundation of the human resource planning is the job analysis and the job analysis would give us that what uh, aspects are important for a job, what working conditions would be there and the job analysis provides uh, information relating to description and specification. Descriptions would talk about a job and specifications would talk about the qualifications which are essential for an individual to have otherwise they will not be a part and they will not be selected for that particular job. Now, how do organizations attract a quality workforce is through the recruitment. We have recruitment policies uh, through advertisement or maybe uh, the initial screening or maybe from the references of the current employees. And after the recruitment methods, uh, we talk about the external and internal and uh, actually the candidates would come and apply for the organizations and how do organizations attract a quality workforce is then we talk about the selection, the selection procedure which is all about screening of uh, and discounting of the people who are not fit to be an organization check. Then of course we would be doing a series of tests together, their aptitude tests, their interviews, their reference checkings which they have given and the physical examination and finally you will hire the individual. Now, when you talk about the selection process, the first aspect is that you have to have a formal application followed by the interview, then followed by the testing, reference checking, physical examination and the analysis and decisions. So, if the person is not selected, you have to specify what reasons are there to be excluding from the workforce. Then, of course, uh, all these steps have to be taken care of very nicely, only then the criteria of the selection would be fair because now we are living in a world of knowledge and we have a right to information act which has actually made the people empowered that give us the reasons that for what reasons uh, this individual was selected and give us the reasons for why this individual was not selected. So you have to be very specific about uh, all these aspects. Then we talk about uh, you know the quality workforce. You have to develop the social orientation of these people. Then um, you have to develop them by a set of training programs which are very important. Uh, then you do the performance appraisal that yes after giving uh, the pre and the post scenario uh, of I mean what kind of benefits have been derived. Then you talk about uh, a certain uh, techniques in which we can improve the quality aspects of the workforce. Uh, you can either check their behavioral anchor techniques or you can take their uh, you know conditions on the graphic scales. And uh, of course, then we have behaviorally anchored rating scales. All these scales would help us in uh, and giving a deep analysis of these kind of people or you can give them certain critical incidents and you can ask them to give their opinions about it. And if you are very happy with the opinions, then of course, you would rate that this individual is a good person. The analysis results would be good. Then of course, uh, uh, the, uh, the analysis and the appraisal could be from the peer group also for the from the other aspects of the uh, organization also so that whatever consensus and the report which you develop for the people is a comprehensive and a good and a right report because uh, this would mark their career planning and this would mark their career development in the future activities. Then you have to see their life uh, balance also, work life balance also. Then how do uh, people maintain uh, the quality workforce is when you talk about maintaining them you talk about the money aspects. They are very crucial for the people uh, for an organization to be stayed in that organization. I mean when you talk about uh, the, uh, the maintenance of the quality workforce, we talk about the fringe benefits, the flexible benefits, the compensation benefits. 
then of course uh, if all these benefits are uh, endorsed to them time and again they would never leave that organization and would always be a part of that organization and the labor turnover aspects would be lower in that case and the labor management relationship would also be strengthened because here everyone everyone is working for money then you have to maintain the quality of the workforce is all about that you have to nip out all the reasons uh, for which there can be a strike and there could be a picketing or a boycott you have to find out the reasons the deep insights of because of what reasons uh, this is happening and as a matter of fact uh, uh, if you are uh, into all this i mean the employees are into all this then you have to reason out that why there is a fallout on the organizational part you have to reason out uh, what is happening and why it is happening and you have to again take a strategic decision so that all these aspects are completely wiped out which will be very good for the human resources to be a part of the organizations and uh, of course this will be enduring in nature and give the future benefits for the organization so we have talked about uh, overall how to manage the people and what is the role of the hr department in in this so i hope this session was uh, uh, good for you and uh, thank you so much uh, with this note thank you ma'am thank you so very much for giving us uh, another productive session and dear friends we believe that your feedbacks are very very important for us uh, so keep writing to us our email id is info.cc@ritnic.in if you have any queries definitely we would uh, love to solve your queries next time when dr namita rashput visits our studio till then take care goodbye thank you ma'am thank you so very much mm -hmm.